Hey Grinder School, this is CF The Natural and today what I have for you is a session of four PLO that I played on Juicy Steaks uh, about five days ago or so. I recorded the session without sound and now I'm going to go back over it and uh, comment on my play, uh, the play of others, you know what happened and in particular I'll be able to pause the video to go into more detail where there's some action and then fast forward through the sections where there isn't uh, much action. So without any further ado let's get started here. Over on table one uh, you can see I, I joined these tables uh, well six hands earlier it looks like and uh, just long enough to get the HUDs up and running. And so you can see that on table one, I had ace, queen, 10, three, double suited on the button. This player truck limps, uh, gold drake, 19 raises, I flat call the raise, uh, the little, the small blind that is flat calls the raise. So let's, uh, let's move forward in the action here. Okay, so I basically flop chin. I flop uh, the nut full house. So obviously right now all uh, my focus is on is getting value and as much as possible. Um, there is one, I shouldn't say the nut full house, somebody that has a pair of queens has a better hand than me and as unlikely as that sounds in, in PLO it's, it's always possible especially since a hand preflop like queen queen xx you're not going to three bet whereas you were probably going to three bet queens uh, in no limit hold'em or it's just easier to judge if someone has a big pair preflop but at any rate um, you know I have the second best full house and I'm probably not going anywhere in a case like this uh, you know it's just all about going to value town and getting every bit I can so uh, the play is on the small blind, ill coach. I've played against this guy quite a bit. He's a very loose player, 74, 17. He bets full pot. So that's great. Makes it easy for me. I'm obviously not going to raise here. There's no reason to raise. I want him to catch up if possible, maybe hit a flush. Flush card comes in. Uh, he goes all in. Uh, instant call by me. And as you can see, he had the naked 10. So he had trips was hoping to fill up, didn't have anything better. I got a bigger full house on them. So right off the bat, I win a big pot, pick up uh, a nice big pot. So that's a good way to start the session. Over here on table two, I have queens, triple suited, uh, not a bad hand. Uh, on table one, I, I fold this hand. Uh, I could limp behind here. And that's what I decide to do. I don't think it's good enough to raise. It's really not that strong of a hand. Unfortunately, I completely missed this flop, and I'm sure that I'll just be dumping it. We can probably fast forward a little bit here. may not be a... let's fast forward a little bit maybe see if we can get to where there's more looks like it checked around here on table two I still only have a pair of queens I don't think that I'm going to be betting in this situation No. So everybody checks, and yeah, somebody has uh, trip fours. Not surprising. That's why I didn't bet. It just, uh, as we've said a million times, a, a single pair just isn't much in PLO. Going to be folding that hand on table two. Let's jump forward a little bit since we don't have a lot going on. As you guys know, I fold a very high percentage of hands, so much of the time I will be folding. Isn't going to be a lot going on. This hand, I for tens for four cents, I might complete this. You could fold it too, or triple suited. But the ten jack and queen are fairly well connected. I guess I decide to go ahead and complete. I could have folded that also, though, on table one, 
and we don't really hit anything here and I'm sure that we will be dumping this hand. There's no reason to continue against three opponents. It's just not enough um, not enough equity. And when somebody bets pot and we've just got basically nothing, we're just going to let it go. Table two, another junky hand. Let's skip forward a bit in the action. Looks like I pick up an uh, okay hand here on table one but I let it go at a position. This really isn't that strong. We had a, uh, a dangler there too. Table two. We'll see a flop, but it's a junker hand, obviously. A low rundown, but it's triple suited. We do pick up an open-ended straight draw, but it's just not, again, very good. An 8-out draw on PLO is not very good, and that's all we have. And if anybody bets, and, and this Bazibra, Bazibra bets pot, we're going to be folding this hand. On table 1, we get a queen ten six five on the button. We could raise this, but we let it go. I, I, I don't mind letting it go. Against... Uh, Loose player. I, mean, I could have raised it. It was a decent hand. It wasn't a good hand. It's not going to hit the flop very often, so I really don't have a problem with folding it. It's a conservative play, but I don't have a problem folding it. I really don't. On table two, this is a hand where because we have a suited ace, somewhat connected cards will probably complete, even though we're out of position to everybody for two cents. You know, just in case we hit a flush or something along that line. And obviously we miss completely and we're just going to let it go. It's just nothing. So it's not worth it. Let's, uh, let's move forward a little bit here. There's just not much going on. Table one, we pick up unsuited queens. For four cents, though, we'll probably call just to see if we can hit a set. Um, you could also, you know, fold it, but I think you, it's okay to complete. You know, if you hit a set of queens, you would have a decent hand. Uh, here we pick up, again, an open-ended straight draw, but in PLO, that's just not very much. And I, uh, I don't think I'm going to be betting here. We don't have a flush draw, so some of our outs are dirty. Any of the spade outs are dirty. There's just no reason to, to mess around. Um, and I'm sure we're just going to be dumping this. And we do. I guess you could say that when I play PLO, I pretty much am just a nut peddler, you know? Not totally, but for the most part, I do sit around and wait for big hands. Not necessarily monsters, but really strong hands before I get involved. So you could, you could accuse me of nut peddling, so to speak. Um... But the reason I do that is, is you know, number one, it works. And number two, if, if, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You know, I mean, if people were adjusting against me and, and, and uh, realizing what I was doing and playing back and making it impossible for me to do that, then I'd have to play differently. And, and I would. But because they don't, and, and I still get paid off when I hit uh, really big hands against their second best, then there's just no reason to play marginal hands. So, yeah, I guess I do nut pedal, but uh, it works. So why not? Let's jump forward a little bit again because, once again, there isn't a lot of action going on since I am folding most of the hands. It looks like we still don't have. We'll see if we don't pick up something the next couple hands. I'll just jump it forward some more. There are some uh, some more action coming up. Here we, on table one, we pick up aces, triple suited. I don't think this is worth a raise, to be honest. I'm probably going to limp behind. You could raise, 
Uh, if it wasn't triple suited, I would, but that really takes away, you know, the value of trying to hit a flush. So I prefer to just limp behind here and then see how the flop comes and decide. You could raise that. I wouldn't have an objection to it, but I prefer to to just limp behind for more post-flop action. And then when somebody pots it here, uh, I don't have a reason to play. All I have is just a pair. I have no flush draw, no real straight draw, so we just let it go. Interesting to see if this player, Aquasita, has a real hand. He's a very crazy, look at this, 95-47 on table one, Aquasita. Crazy loose player. And so this is somebody that we'll be looking to take advantage of. We have a pretty nice seat here on table one because we have two very loose players to our right. We have uh, this Aquasita player who is uh, 95-46. And then we have this Bin Laden 77 that's 81-50. Those are two really, really uh, fishy players to have to our right. So this is a good seat on table one. And we'll have to see if we get lucky and maybe pick up um, an opportunity to take advantage of that or not. And table two is a pretty junky hand. Table one is a junky hand. So once again, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. See if we have more action. Coming up. Looks like Bin Laden 77 left this guy on table two. Here, two pair. Again, I'd probably complete. We are suited. We have two chances to flop a set. I don't know that I'd call a raise out of position with a hand like that. Maybe sometimes, but I would definitely uh, complete. Here on table two, I have a two pair, but it's a weak two pair. I do decide to call, and I take it down. Interesting. Well, because this select player, 76-5, is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy player there. That was a very small pot, and I decided to go ahead. I need to be good about 25% of the time, so I decided to call that. like Bingo Bob made a raise here on table one. We've played against him before. Very solid tag. I don't think I'll be calling this min raise now. So let's jump forward a little bit more. Try to find a spot where we've got some action. Table two, again, a pretty junky hand. Not much. Quite a few loose players, as you can see. 78-10, this on table two, the Solette up here. I've played against him before. Obviously, this Aquasita to my right here on table one is really, really, really loose player. Look, we have a real small pot all in on table two. Only 71 cents, so it isn't something of huge interest. Here on table two, we pick up kings with a suit. Kings obviously don't have the value in PLO that they do in No Limit Hold'em, but if it's folded to me, I think that's still worth a raise. I don't like to open limp, and so I would raise this, I would think, and then, you know, if I don't hit something post-flop, I, uh, I can let it go, and we do raise it. Get a couple callers. We pick up top set. 
Let me pause this for a second. So here on table two, we raise with our single suited kings, decent side cards, 810, nothing special, but better than average. Uh, we get three callers and we hit top set. Now this is a situation where you really, really do not want to slow play. Um, sets are not nearly as valuable in PLO as they are in Hold'em. We've touched on that before, but more importantly, this is a somewhat wet board. I know that the four and the 10 aren't that connected. The king and the 10 aren't that connected, but still we have a flush draw and we have a straight draw. Uh, when people are given four cards and you have three opponents, it's not that hard for somebody to have a jack queen in their hand or an ace queen. Either one of those will be a jack queen gives you an open ended straight draw an ace queen gives you a gut shot. Really easy for somebody to have a flush draw. And last time I checked, a flush or a straight both beat a set. So I'm going to be betting probably full pot here. And if the turn comes safe, I'm going to be betting full pot again. I'm not going to try to bet half pot or, or something small and mess around and try to, you know, draw somebody in and try to win a bigger pot. Now, if this was a dryer board, if this was a four of spades, I would probably bet half pot and be a little less concerned. But this is just a little too wet. And so I think it's a mistake to slow play. I've seen it happen a lot of times. I will be betting big. And if someone is going to outdraw me, they're going to have to pay. I also want to build a pot. You don't flop sets that often. And I want to make uh, the most money I can. And I did bet full pot. Looks like everybody folded, but that's an okay result. I don't have a problem with that. I'd rather do that than to slow play and get uh, get caught. Under the gun, this on table two is not quite strong enough to play. So be very, very wary in PLO about slow play in hands like sets and two pair. E even on dry boards, you really shouldn't. On wet boards, it's it can be suicidal to do that. Let's jump forward again here. See if we pick up any further action. On table one, we do have a suited ace king, but the side cards are junky. We're out of position to this Aquasita. I'm going to be in position against him five out of six hands. I don't really see a reason to play out of position unless I really have a good hand. So I would think I'd probably fold this slightly better, I might call. And it looks like, uh, yeah, I did end up folding that and go past. And he raises again here. We're on the button this time, but that hand's just not strong enough. On table two, we have top pair, but that's all we have here. No real potential to improve other than hit a jack or I guess a three. Probably going to let this go. I'm thinking I, I yeah, I'm not going to play it. Just not strong enough. Let's move forward again. I just want to keep things moving here. I don't really want to watch a bunch of hands where I'm I'm folding. A live session, that's fine, but if I have the ability to jump past those, I might as well. folding it on table one, I'm sure. It's a hand most people would limp, but it's just not a very strong hand. And of course, same thing on table two. A pair of fours is meaningless. The suit is meaningless. We're just going to let it go. Let's jump forward a little bit. Trying to. We're just not really picking up a lot of cards. Pretty typical. It doesn't bother me. I'm a patient guy. I don't mind just sitting back and waiting for, for good spots. 
it's a boring style, I guess. You know, if you're if you're an action seeker, my style of poker is not going to work for you. No question about that. Uh, adrenaline junkies, thrill seekers, gamblers, action seekers. It, my style of play would put you to sleep. But um, it works for me because I'm here to try to win, and, uh, optimize my my opportunities, not to uh, you know gamble. So we keep jumping forward here, but we're still not finding a lot of action. I think I have a big hand coming up at some point, though, as I recall. It looks like we might maybe see a, a flop on table two here. Not a great hand. Pair of tens. Have a suit, but it'd just be a ten high flush draw. Not particularly good, but could be worse. Other than hitting the set, though, it's not a lot of potential on table two. Table one, it's a monotone hand. We're going to be folding that. And here on table two, I'm sure we're going to be, unless we pick up something, I don't think we're going to be trying to make a move here. You know, we turn a flush draw, but it's only 10 high. I don't think it's worth a bet. I can see that this Aquasita here is still raising pretty much every hand, playing nice and loose. We just haven't picked up anything against him. Hopefully, uh, we do. Let's move forward again. Don't have a lot going on here. back this one up, see how we came to this hand. Okay, so we're back where we were, but it looks like we played the next hand, so we'll we'll watch that again. I probably limp behind, but let's uh, find out. This is a pretty junky hand against a short stack. I'm probably just going to give it to him. I don't imagine that I'm going to, uh, out of position, I'm going to really. So here we go. I did limp behind. King, queen, five, six, double suited. Much better than average hand. Nothing huge, but certainly worth seeing a flop. Not worth a raise here on table two, but worth seeing a flop. I hit top pair. I also have the second nut flush draw. Checks around to me. I would say that would probably be worth a bet. Uh, somebody else bets. Uh, I would think I would call. I do. No reason to raise. We don't have that. Now we are flush here on table two. It is a second nut flush. I don't know how big of a pot I want to play. But I'm not folding yet. That's for sure. He checks. I would think I would bet for value here. Probably 25, 30 cents, uh, 22, a little bit low maybe, but I probably could have made that a little larger. But it didn't matter. He folded, so I guess it wasn't going to matter. He was going to be folding either way. Maybe could have sized that slightly larger. Uh, looks like some more nothing hands. Let's move forward a bit. Well, we had a smallish pot here. Somebody had a full house, but not a very big pot. 
again, not particularly good hands. I'll move this forward a bit. Looks like we're still not uh, really involved. As I said, the, this is not an untypical session for me. I don't mind sitting back and waiting for good spots and, and folding a lot of hands in the interim. Looks like I'm playing about 13-0 on table two, 15 0 on table one. I haven't even had a hand I could raise yet. You know, I mean, well, 13-3 on table two, 15 0 on table one. Just haven't had a good enough hand to raise. So, you know, it's just what it is. And with no potential here on table two, I'll be giving that up. Table one, another junker hand. We'll jump up a little bit. Uh, for four cents, I could call there, but I don't mind folding at a position. Uh, I would have hit two pair, but it doesn't happen often. I don't have a problem with that. I would have hit a full house, actually, but it's a small pot. Uh, you don't want to get in the habit of calling even min raises when you're at a position with so-so hands. I wasn't really suited there, I don't believe. It's just not that good. I don't have a problem with folding that hand on table one. It just wasn't that good. The fact that I got lucky and hit something doesn't mean anything. That's after-the-fact information. Let's jump it forward again. Okay, back up a bit. Looks like I picked up a hand on table one, so I backed it up so I can catch that hand. I don't think it's going to be a big hand, but it looks like I am going to be in, involved in a pot and I hit something. So let's make sure that we catch that from the beginning. So I pick up a pair of queens, double suited. The side cards are pretty crappy here on table one, but it is a, a big pair. It is uh, double suited. Certainly worthy of limping behind. You know, you, you can hit a, a set, you can hit a flush, and I do end up hitting third nut flush. Problem is I got five opponents, so we have to be cautious here. It checks to us we're going to bet, but again, I'm not going to be stacking off here if somebody puts in a bunch of money with a third nut flush. But I do think I should bet here. And I do. two-thirds of the pot. I'm going to try to thin the field. If somebody comes along, then we'll reassess on the turn and river how much money we want to put in. Uh, because these guys are so loose, they just play with anything. But everybody folded, so we did have the best hand. It wasn't particularly big action there, but for me, about as involved as I've been, at least since that first hand. So we'll move forward again here. See what we might pick up. Nothing here. Oh, let's pack this up a bit. All right, so we picked up uh, unsuited aces here in the big blind. I don't think this is really worth a raise. Table one, this is under the gun. It's not strong enough. Later position might be. We're not suited. Nine is a dangler. Uh, so we just check. 
We're going to wait and see if we hit anything on this board. Unfortunately, we don't. We don't have a flush draw. We don't have a straight draw. You notice those are always the first two things I look at, flush draw and straight draw. And those are the most common big hands you're going to hit. And so all we have is our pair of aces, and that's just not going to be enough, you know, to play against four opponents. Um, it's so easy for someone to have two pair here or something like that. We're just going to be giving this up, I'm sure. It's just not strong enough, especially with multiple people calling pot size bets. Just going to let it go. If I had a flush draw, I'd be playing this hand. Still nothing much. Table two, we have a better than average hand of those triple suit. It looks like we completed. So we go six way. We pick up an open ended straight draw, but we don't have a flush draw. And once again, it's just not going to be enough to, to be involved. Our club outs are dirty, so we only really have six outs. And of course, somebody bets pot, and so just not enough. Just not enough. And yeah, we let it go. And we'll just keep jumping forward here. And we certainly don't uh, don't pick up a lot of good hands. I I tend to be card dead quite a bit. Here we have a rundown on table one, four, five, six, seven. Not a very high rundown, but it's certainly worth seeing a flop against these loose players. Mostly loose passive. We pick up two pair. It's not a really good two pair. I decide to check it. The board just a little too wet, I think, to be betting. Now we, we hit our straight on table one. We hit our straight on table one. And let me pause this for a second. We have hands on both tables here. So, table one, we hit two pair. We checked it for and Now we have uh, the nut straight for this board, but that can change very fast. If an eight comes or a nine comes, somebody can have a bigger straight. If a club comes, they have a flush. So, we have the nuts now, but that can change very quickly. And you would be very worried about how much money we put in. Table two, we flop bottom two pair. We were in the big blind. Uh, it was limped, and we flop bottom two pair. Uh, this, I believe, is, is going to be a significant hand here. So we're going to probably see what goes on here and then back up and take a closer look at this one on tape so we can watch the hands uh, individually. Let's focus on table one for a moment, and we'll come back on table, table two. So we get a bet of about two-thirds of the pot from a short stack on table one. We go ahead and just pot it. We're going to want to get the money in now because, like I said, we can be outdrawn very easily. He goes ahead and calls. He has two pair, five and seven. The aces don't matter. He has two pair. And we hang on. We take down that pot. Okay, let's back this up a bit so we can look at the hand on... Whoops, that was a mistake. We went too far back, didn't we? Let's. Luckily, I know where we were. Let's get back to where we were. I will fix this. I think this will take us pretty close to where we were. Yep. Just going to be a second here to catch up. 
So we're going to be watching table two here because we're going to have a significant hand on table two uh, against this player select that I'm going to want to talk about. So again, we're in the big blind. Okay, we flop bottom two pair one on one against this player who's uh, 78 6, I believe. 78 8. 78 8. Loose passive player. So we bet pot. It's, it's a weak two pair, but it's just one on one against him. It's a somewhat dry board, no flush draw. He calls. Uh, that does bring in a possible uh, straight here. Unfortunately, that's not a very good card for us, and we just have our second and bottom pair, second and fourth pair. So that's not a really good card for us. And we check. He also, I believe, checks. No, well, he bets. But very small, so we're going to call this, I think. With the two pair possibility hitting a full house. So we hit our full house here. We hit our full house on the river. Well, let's pause this for a sec. So let's, let's take a look at this. So we hit the full house, but we have the third full house. Something you have to think about in PLO, which you wouldn't know, meaning that anybody with 6-7 or 6-5 has us beat. Someone has a straight, we obviously have them crushed. But if they have 6-7 or 6-5, they have us beat. So I checked to him, and he bet 16 cents into a 51 cent pot. So what to do here? Uh, I believe what I do is I raise. I full potted. I believe what you have to do here is, is maybe raise this to like 70 cents, 80 cents, and then be prepared to fold to a re-raise. The thing is, is this guy may be 78, uh, 8, this select, but he's not very aggressive. His aggression frequency is aggression factor. He's not. He's only 40% river aggression. Jones. He's not a really aggressive player. So if he suddenly comes back at us, that probably means that he has a better full house. I could have a straight, but I would think with a straight, he would more be calling if we re-raise him here. So I, I think I misplayed this hand quite badly, actually. and I'm disappointed in what I did, even though I did get uh, a full house here. So I go ahead and pot it. And it's back on him, and he immediately shoves all in. He repots it on me. So let's think about this. I check to him. He bets small. I put in a maximum raise. I potted it. Now he repots all in. Now you remember, uh, perhaps, I don't know if you do, but if you've watched any of my previous videos, when I did the short where I talked about the differences between PLO and No Limit Hold'em and the biggest mistakes that are made in PLO, one of the things I said in that video was that unless you have the absolute stone cold, unbeatable nuts, which we don't have here. We have the, the third nuts. Always be aware of what hands could beat you and how likely your opponent is to play a big pot when he doesn't have one of those hands. Okay, so what hands beat us here? Well, 6-7 beats us. 6-5 beats us. 6-3 ties us. Uh, if somebody has something like 4-7, uh, Two four, right? A four eight. Any of those hands, then we beat them. So there's a few combos that beat us, a few combos that we beat. Basically, we beat any of the straights, but we lose to any of the full houses. We tie the bottom full house. So how likely is he going to reshove all in against our re-raise? Our raise, that is. He bets we raise. Now, he shoves with just a straight, especially against a tight player like us. I don't know how observant a guy like this is, but the truth is I think that we have to fold here. I think I should have raised smaller, and then I think I have to let this go, even though it's a full house, because we don't have the stone nuts here. We have the third, the underfold, the third full house. And if he has 6-5 or 6-7, we're crushed. I think this is a fold as... Uh, you know, as nitty as that might seem to some people. And again, the reason is, like I said before, you, you have to say to yourself, how likely is this person to want to stack off uh, 
with one of those hands that we're beating. And the only hands we're beating were only tying all the full, the full bowl of us or losing to the others. We're only beating a straight. I think he just called with that. So I think this is a fold. Unfortunately, I, I believe I called this in the moment, in the heat of the moment, I did call. And he has a 6-7. He has the bigger full house. So in the heat of the moment, uh, I convinced myself that he could do that with a straight. He could do that with uh, with 4-8 or, or uh, you know, 4-deuce four, uh, four or one of those hands. And that was just a, a, a mistake. Um, there's no, no timer bank here on Juicy Stakes. I think if I had more time to really analyze it, maybe I would have made the hero fold. But the truth is I can't really make any excuses. Uh, that was just a very poor call. Uh, it was a bad play. And um, it cost me a couple of dollars. And uh, it was just stupid. It was just a, a very poor play. Well, as I said, you always have to ask yourself, uh, what hands out there can beat you? And is your opponent really going to be willing to play a huge pot without one of those hands? And I just don't think that he would have there. And so uh, it was a very poor call and one that I should not have made. So let's move on. I definitely don't play perfect poker. I make mistakes like anybody does. And that was definitely a mistake. And it's a good learning opportunity. You always have to try to learn from the mistakes you make. And that was definitely a uh, an error. And uh, I will say that 90% of the big pots that I lose in PLO, if not more, 95%, seem to come when I have a full house and somebody has either a bigger full house uh, or uh, quads or something like that, straight flush. Here on table two, I hit the second nut flush, so I bet. I'm going to continue to bet. I think there's no reason to slow down. I, I'm not necessarily looking to stack off the second nut flush against a full stack player, but I will keep betting, I think. And if he re-raises me, then it's kind of a sick spot here on table two. I decided to check the river. I was hoping he might bet. He didn't. And, uh, oh, he had the third nut flush. He had the queen high flush here on table two, so wasn't going to get really any more money, probably. Maybe a small bet. Uh, but anyways, I guess it's a good thing if the only time you're losing big pots is to coolers when you have something like a full house. Somebody has a bigger full house or four of a kind. But again, you, you have to look for those spots where you can make those tough but good folds. There still are spots in PLO where you can lay down a full house. It can be challenging because in No Limit Hold'em, where I come from and most players come from that end up playing PLO, you're not going to lay down a full house almost, I don't know if you ever would in your career really. Uh, but in PLO, you do have to learn how to, how to lay down hands that big. And that was a spot that, that I should have. So like I said, a good learning opportunity. Let's go ahead and jump forward here a bit since not much is, uh, is going on. Double suited here on table two, but two's a dangler, it's just a junky hand. We're going to let that go. Let's keep moving. I raised this on table two. Looks like on table one, oh, flop is set here. Let's back up. Looks like I, I finally actually hit something on both tables. Of course, as soon as I, I fast forward, then I end up picking up uh, some hands. So let's back up and let's see what happened there. Don't want to jump over the small amount of action that I do get involved in. Obviously on table one, this is a hand we're going to be folding. But the hand afterwards we're involved in. And that'll be coming up in just a second. I think on both tables I get involved here, so let's check that out. I have to wait a minute here to get to him. Here we go. 
So I pick up kings with a suit. The side cards are junky here on table one, but it is a pair of kings. We are suited. This player here, as we know, Aquasita, is super loose. He's down to 90 cents. Do you notice he had a full stack to start? So that tells you something. So we're going we're gonna to call in position. See a flop. And we hit top set. Medium board, not a wet board, not a super dry board. There's a, there's a straight draw, but it's not too bad. Here in table two, we have double suited, two pairs, queens and jacks. So we're going to raise that from under the gun. With top set, we're going to be betting here. And we do. We go ahead and bet. Not quite pot, almost pot. And uh, Aquasita goes all in. We're obviously calling that. We're not going anywhere. And he has a gut shot. Bob, pair of nines and a gut shot. And he hits his gut shot. That's always nice. That's always nice. Sometimes you just can't uh, catch a break. So you notice on the flop, 7-9 king, he has the pair of nines. That's meaningless. All he has is, you know, 9-10 jack king, basically. Uh, that's all he has. He has a gut shot, is all he has. And second pair. I have top set. And on the river, he hits his gut shot. So even when I finally catch top set, I've been waiting all day to try to play against this guy. Finally get him to go all in. Of course, he didn't have much money left. And he hits a gut shot on the river to beat me. So that's typical. So on table one, we raised under the gun with our uh, two pair queens and jacks double suited. It's a strong hand. Uh, let's see what happens there. We get called just by one player. Not a very good flop for us. I have an over card to our two pair. We don't pick up a flush draw. I go ahead and check. He checks. I may stab at this point. He didn't bet the flop. Um, I think he probably bets an ace, but I might check also. It depends on the player and the situation. Uh, here, I think I maybe could have stabbed, but I decided to check. And just, I guess I'm going to give it up. I could have bet, but I don't mind giving up here, really. It's, um, the board's, you know, wet enough. If he has any draw or anything, he's not going to go away. So I really don't have a problem with that. He's 50-25. He's somewhat loose. So I probably just decided it wasn't worth it. And I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. We're double suited again on table two, but our cards are pretty junky. Have to hit a flush to really do anything there. Could always get lucky, but well, we hit two pair, um, top and bottom. I think we're gonna bet this. We want to try to take it down right away. We have, it's hard for us to improve here, and there's a lot of ways to get beat. So we want to just try to take it down right now if we can on table two. So we're gonna bet it, and we take it down. That's a good result for a hand like that. Two pair, as you know, is not that good, so I'm fine with that. Quite fine with that. Let's uh, move forward again. I think there might be one more significant hand here to be played. If I remember, we're almost done with the session. But I think there might be one more hand that we play. Let's see. Here we have uh, some connected cards and a suited king, so we'll pay the two cents and complete. As you know, I don't complete uh, that often, but here I decided to go ahead and do it. Unfortunately, we don't hit anything. And probably just be letting it go. Unless I pick up a three on the turn. It's about the only card, really, that would help us. And given a bet, I don't think we're going to be, be doing that. We've only got a few more minutes of action here, but I think there might be, as I said, I thought there was one more hand, as I recall from my, uh, when I played this. I don't think this is it, though. Six, six, eight, queen. We're not going to be playing that hand. 
so no, maybe not. And Jack four four four, we won't be playing that hand. So. Keep moving. We have a suited ace here on table one, but just a pair of eights. Uh, Obviously, the guy raising Aquacito is very loose, but my guess is I probably, oh, I do decide to call. Okay. I could have folded that, but actually with a suited ace and a jack with it and a pair in position against him, that's not a bad call, actually. Try to uh, see a flop in position. Here on table two, we pick up a uh, two pair with a suit. This is a good hand. Kings and queens will definitely be raising this hand. So we pick up a flush draw here, the nut flush draw against Aquacita. He bets, we call. The board is paired, we don't love that. Uh, now it's double paired, so we're not really thrilled there. Let's, let's pause this for a sec. So we've got two pairs on the board. That's not real thrilling, because anybody has a king or a three obviously has this beat. We have a nut flush draw. Um, but a guy like this could have a lot, so Depending on the bet size, I, I might call something here. Here on table one, unfortunately, our our kings don't mean much with an ace on the board. So I don't think we'll be doing much unless we can hit a king, you know, or, or a queen. So let's go back and see what happens here against our good friend Aquasita. And we hit the nut flush on the river, and we call his bet. And, of course, he has king three for the full house. We just can't beat this guy. It's a small pot, as you can see. He didn't lose much, but we just can't beat him. We hit the nut flush. He bets small. We call, and uh, we lose to his uh, king three full house. So we do hit. Uh, let's pause this here. In fact, let's uh, back this up a little bit so we can look at table two. Let's focus on table two here this time. We already saw this hand. Um, so as I said, this is not a very good flop for us. We check it. Yeah, see, so we hit the nut flush on table one, and I think he bet. Oh, we bet, actually. We bet half pot, and he called us with the full house. My mistake. So over here, now we hit our uh, set of kings, and so we bet full pot here. And it looks like... Uh, Salette is thinking about it. And he calls. And the board pairs on the river, giving us a full house. Second nut full house. Pair of aces would beat us. We have the second nut full house. We bet full pot. And he calls. And we win a nice pot there. And let's see what he had. Ah, oh, and he had the second nut flush. So we did to him what he did to us. And we got most of our money back that we lost. Notice that we had kings over sevens. He had sevens over kings. So there's a poor river card for him. It Same thing happened to him that happened to us. I thought there was a big hand here at the very end of the tape. He uh, hit a river card that gave him the second best full house, just as we hit a river card earlier that gave us the second best full house. So could he have folded this one? Well, that's a good question. If I was in his shoes and somebody bet full pot, I would look at this and say that aces beats me, kings beats me. Um, that's a good. That's a good question. It's hard to lay down a full house, but depending on the opponent, you got to be prepared to do it. So I don't know. I'm not going to say he made a terrible call, but I think he. Well, I remember I opened from under the gun. So frankly, if somebody that's a tag opens from under the gun, and we get a board like this, I am going to give him credit for having aces or kings, and I would probably have folded, or at least I'd hope. I consider folding that full house sevens over kings. But a player like this, you don't expect to. So we did get back most of the money we lost to him, not quite all. 
So, uh, but that's twice here we saw that. So uh, there's only another minute left and nothing happens here. So I'm going to finish the video here. So let me let me finish by saying that there we saw some good examples of where, you know, full houses, which you think of as the nuts, were, were not in PLO. And so once again, you have to always be prepared to, if you have the time, and, and like I said, there's no time bank here on Juicy Steaks, but you've got to try to, you know, go through the analysis and ask yourself, you know, what hands out there are better than mine? And um, is he going to play a huge pot, my opponent that is, with a hand uh, that isn't one of those? And uh, the second best full house can be a, a, a big loser. And as you saw here tonight, so uh, you got to learn sometimes to lay down those really big hands. And uh, hopefully uh, next time I'll do a better job of it. Anyways, that's all for this session. So this has been uh, CF The Natural for Grinder School. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the forum. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.